faith stories? My now wife Chelsea was like, uh, "Hey, you're coming to church with me on Sunday," and I was like, "All right, I've you know I've been looking at the Bible, you know, let's let's do this." Fish and memory. When I first started, I was just fish, fish, focus on the fish, focus on the fish. And I see the kid catch a fish. I'm like, good job. Perfect. Awesome. And then he goes up there and I'm like, we're catching slot snook. And this kid's up here going, oh, the breeze. I'm like, I like that. This, this is exactly what it's about. Meaningful conversations. You have to stay in the word. You have to have a good support system. You have to know what the end goal is. You have to know who God is. Positivity. This is the Faith and Fishing Podcast. With your hosts, Cam Steele. If your identity is you're an angler, um, whenever you're not doing well on the water, that's whenever you can't be content. And Robert Randall. And his timing is perfect. We might not always agree with it, uh, and we might not always understand it at the moment. Bring you interviews with some amazing guests from the fishing community and discuss all things to do with fishing and their faith. Welcome to the fan. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. I'm Cam. Hey, and I'm Robert. How's it going, Robert? Doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing Feeling well. A little bit better. I, I missed it last week because uh, it ended up I had pneumonia. So. Uh, <laughs> it was a it was a wild week and a half and I'm still still a little bit under the weather but doing a whole lot better than I was this time last week what about you uh, I'm doing all right I uh, don't have don't have the cough but I've got a bum knee had to go to the doctor this morning um, and I wish I had like this awesome story of how I got injured or something uh, you should make one up I I don't <laughs> It, it wasn't like there was any kind of injury or anything. It was um, last night uh, we ended up having a, a little miscommunication with the with the date and weren't able to record. So I was putting my uh, recording stuff away and got got down on my knees to pull a um, pull a pull the box for the mixer out from under the stool. And it just felt like felt like I was kneeling on on a bruise. It was just felt weird and then it started hurting real bad went to bed woke up this morning and i was telling you earlier it looked like uh the knot that the looney tunes get whenever you hit them in the head um it had just that weird swelling and so I got some bursitis uh so i'm gonna be dealing with that for a little while it's gonna be super fun um i might have to carry my kayak cushion around with me for a while so i have something to kneel on if i need to kneel um <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, last week we had a fantastic episode. Uh, it was the live episode celebrating the, the fourth birthday of the podcast. Um, and, uh, I want to formally apologize to all of you who were, uh, who had made plans. I, I know there were a lot of you who had made plans to cut, to join that live. Um, uh, <laughs> um, but I ended up, uh, I didn't even realize I, what I had done, I, I was like, why, why is nobody like, I thought, I thought I had people to come on. I thought, I thought people had said, yes, why are they all of a sudden saying I can't do it tonight? And I, I looked down <laughs> and, uh, I was, um, I was telling, telling everybody whenever we had Josh on, I, I looked down, I was like, so as of, and I looked at the date, I was like, oh my goodness, there this was go. supposed to be next week. Yeah. <laughs> Even when you texted me, I was sick. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was this week. And I thought I had just got my days mixed up. I was like, <laughs> um, I must be, you know, because it just all, it all runs together at times and we're all busy. And I just figured I was like, well, I'm, I must, I thought that was next week, but I must be a, lost a week somewhere in there. Yeah. And this is not our normal recording day. Um, we are, we just been slammed busy here lately. We don't even know what we're going to talk about tonight. But we wanted to get up here and give y'all something. We didn't want to to skip another week. I know we just took a took a break off for for the Easter uh, Easter holiday, so I didn't want to uh, to make a habit out of it. So uh, here we are. We're going to talk about something. We haven't figured it out yet, but we're going to do it. 
Um, yeah. I did want to add to my list of my favorite faith and fishing moments. Um, uh, I had this on the list and whenever I was transferring the list, it didn't make it over. Um, but I don't know where it would have fallen on the, like the, the tier, but having my dad on for the father's day episode that we did a while back, um, that's super special to me because, you know, whenever, uh, whenever I am without my dad, I'm going to be able to go back and, and listen to that conversation that we had and listen to him, uh, nervously tell his testimony and, and, um, uh, and have some fun with that. So that's super special to me. Um, but one other quick announcement. Um, unfortunately, the time has come. Um, we are going to close the merch store pretty soon. So if you want to buy anything from the merch store, I'll leave it up for another week after this airs. Um, but uh, Teespring has just raised their prices to the point where I don't feel comfortable charging you what they want me to charge and I can't uh, like, and what I want to charge is less than what they're charging me. So I'm going to close it down. We'll, we'll figure out another, another route to go, especially if, if y'all end up reaching out to me and saying that you want to purchase some, some merch or something, but um, and if you do want to purchase merch, let me know what kind of merch you're interested in. So, um, but yeah, I, I knew that was coming pretty soon. Um, just with the way they were raising their prices. And if they, if, if, if their quality was higher, I would, I would feel better about, about charging what they want me to charge. Yeah. But like, it's like, you know, it, I think, I think it is an 18 to $20 shirt. I'm comfortable charging that, but they want to, they want me to charge like $30 for a t-shirt. And I'm, I'm just, even if their quality were much, much higher, I don't know that I'd be willing to pay that for just a t-shirt. So, um, and I don't know that I'd be willing to charge y'all the listeners uh, for, for that as well. So right. we'll, we'll figure out another, another route to go. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so Robert, what's been new with you? I feel like it's been yeah, it's a very been a long time. Bit. <laughs> it has. So uh, I started feeling bad. So we're recording this on a Thursday. So I started feeling bad, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. So it's been, I've been down about a week and a half, but um, the first part of last week was really rough. And then by Friday, I was thought I had it licked. Friday night, I felt pretty good. Signed up for the CCKF tournament on, where was that? That was Jordan. Signed up for the Jordan tournament, but I knew I had to go back into work Friday night. So I, I worked until midnight Friday night and then just told myself, whenever I get up, I'm going to get up, go to Jordan, just kind of fun fish for a while. I just want to participate because I had already missed a, a tournament for CCKF. So I uh, just wanted to make myself get out there even though I was going to miss the morning bite and I knew that and I was okay with it. I was just more fun fishing and participating, but the wind was howling and uh, people caught fish, but most people caught them early. Um, the bite kind of died off at nine 30 or 10. And I think I actually got in the water at 10 30, somewhere around there. <clears throat> fish for four hours. And I don't even think I got a bite, but I had a good time anyway. And went to the, uh, Went to the weigh-in where, you know, we always, at Jordan, we always go to the uh, Farrington side, um, the non-motorized side, because there's always less traffic there. But about the time we pulled up, there was a, a big crappie tournament that was trying to use the same parking lot. So that, that was interesting with all the big crappie rig boats on the non-motorized side parking along with like 30 kayaks, you know, not everybody came. I think there was 50 something people that fished the kayak thing, but, um, anyway, it was good to see everybody. Um, you know, good to, uh, see the four, seven lures, uh, guy out there. He had a table set up and had a bunch of his stuff out there. So I had a good time at that. 
and then you know felt pretty good the rest of the day saturday and then got up sunday and it's like i'd been run over by a truck again so decided to finally go to the doctor and um you know he decided that i had pneumonia i took x-rays and stuff and so now i've been on medicine since sunday so this the last four days and feeling pretty good now so the cough is still hanging around a little bit but i'm trying to mute that as we go um and what are we doing this weekend uh, we got bas basketball i was going to try to fish high rock with uh cka i, I I don't think I'm going to, I got too much grass to mow and um, we got basketball and then Ryder also is going to prom with his girlfriend. So um, too much stuff going on Saturday to, to hit that one, but I may try to get the kayak out Sunday maybe and, and fish for a couple hours, but that's really it. You know, just trying to recover from that, uh, trying to fish a little bit and uh you know, trying to cut some grass because that's <laughs> what time of the year it is already. Yeah. What about you? Well, I mean, we've, we've hit that stretch where we've got something planned uh, every single weekend. Um, and it's, you know, we had, uh, it started the week before that we went on vacation and I don't remember what we had going on that weekend. Then we went on vacation and it was our anniversary then we had a wedding to go to last weekend. Next weekend, I'm on call. Um, the next weekend, we've got plans. So it's just that, uh, that kind of exhausting uh, exhausting little stretch here. But, yeah, um, uh, we're, uh, you know, we, we went down to Florence, South Carolina last weekend for a wedding. Um so congratulations to Justin and Lily, um, and friends of ours, and they've been they've been together a while, and they finally decided to go ahead and and tie the knots. Uh, excited for them. Uh, I think they're still down in Jamaica. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, and uh, you know, haven't done much in terms of fishing. I took Henry out. Uh, Like weekend before last, um, I think I, I think I might have even mentioned it on the podcast already. But yeah, did that. Um, but yeah, I, I, we, you and I were talking before we started. We haven't even been paying attention to what's going on in the fishing world lately. Um, we, I know. Uh, yeah, like I. Uh, this is one of those rare times I have no idea of anything <laughs> that's going on. Uh, so. You know, comment below if you can uh, fill us in on some stuff. I hadn't even been listening to my normal podcast or YouTube channels. I've been super busy at work. So, uh, yeah. So whatever, here. whatever way you interact with the podcast, let us know what positive things are going on in the fishing world right there now. You there you go. Yeah. Leave the negative ones off because we already know what those are. Yeah, we don't we don't need to we don't need to give them any more publicity. No, no. We, we don't need to give the negative any more than, than what the, what it's already getting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's uh let's let's find out what's going on. But yeah, um, so it is middle of April. Um, how how are things going with your faith journey this this so far this year, man? Um, doing pretty good. Um. We have, you know, we volunteer in the um, children's hall and do Sunday school about once or twice a month. And uh, since Ryder started basketball up, we've missed some of those. So I've definitely missed uh, missed being a part of that. But uh, I'm pretty sure that we're uh, teaching this Sunday. So that'll be good. Um, but, yeah, doing good. We did the youth um, uh, weekend a couple of that's, uh, maybe that's been three weeks ago now, maybe even a month ago now, and I uh, had kids over and we cooked meals for all the youth at church, like 80 people. And I think there was, I think they said it, there was probably 300 and something people. Just a lot of people from other churches came and uh, we had a big time with that. So it's always good to see the young people and, and how they're interacting and 
honestly to see how open they are to hearing God's word and how excited they are. That that's what gets me excited and keeps me kind of tuned into it is seeing young people and, and other adults as well. Um, you know, and I, I feel like more and more in the sports world, you're seeing people in press conferences and stuff, you know, talk more and more about, um, uh, you know, Jesus Christ and, and God and, you know, they, it just, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like 20 years ago that was there. Uh, you didn't see that on sports center where somebody was, you know, first of all, let me think, you know, put the glory to God, you know, that you, you see that and you hear that quite often. And maybe it's only in my, you know, maybe it's only in the feeds and you're not seeing it on TV. Maybe it is a social media aspect to it. Um, you know, I can't really pinpoint, you know, where those clips are coming from, but I see them quite often. So I, I think that side of it's pretty cool. And, um, I think the fishing world always has quite a few nuggets like that in it, but you're seeing it more and more in the mainstream sports too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'd say, you know, uh, this, I'm kind of in a season of reconnecting with, with people, um, people that I've kind of lost contact with over the years and been kind of rekindling some, some friendships and been having some, some long, uh, long faith-based conversations and everything. And that's been cool. And then, um, uh, Henry has started asking questions about Jesus and, uh, there was, uh, so he goes to, um, preschool at a church and, uh, that kind of, uh, every so often he'll, uh, he'll remind us we have to, we have to pray before, before, uh, our, our meal or, um, something <laughs> like that. But, he, uh, I, they, they, they had a lot of uh, conversations about it at preschool right before Easter, and so he started having questions about it, and he would he would bring it up. We'd be uh, anytime he would see something that looked even remotely close to a cross, he would uh, he would just yell out, "Jesus died on a cross!" Yeah, and then he came back. <laughs> That's good stuff. Um. But yeah, um, so that has been, that's been really awesome is being able to have those conversations with him and, um, you know, go through like the, my first Bible and like the, the Bible stories and stuff that he's got and, and, uh, and go through some of those and, and he, he loves, he loves Noah's art. He, he, lo he loves the, all the, uh, all the animals and everything. So, um. But yeah, that, that's been that's been pretty cool, and that's kind of where where I'm at so far this year. Um, and then you know, season of preparation, uh, you know, just getting ready for the addition. Um, yeah, it's big. Yeah, my, big, it's a big step. My wife is not 100 percent sure that she's gonna gonna make it another month and a half. So. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, the last the last uh, six weeks to a month is is pretty is pretty rough, and it's yeah. And I mean, you try to do what you can do as a as a husband and a a man, but you just you just can't you can't help a lot of times, and it's it's really it's a it's a helpless feeling when you can't fix the problem. You know, and you're like, I'm a fixer. Like if somebody's got my wife or kids or whatever's got a problem, uh, they know that's good. OK, just go ask dad. Dad will fix it or figure out if I don't know how to find out how or find somebody else that can fix it. But uh, there's no help in that, you know. Yeah. One moment they want to eat coffee grounds and the next moment they want ice cream. And, you know, it's you know, come here, get away. You know, you you know. Yes, I'd be the same way though. It's yeah, and this this baby is far more active than Henry ever was, and she's just so uncomfortable. I mean, yeah. you can just look over there and see like the elbow elbows and the feet just going 
all over the place in her belly. And it's just like, uh, you oh. better get ready then. Be a rambunctious one. <laughs> <laughs> it was surprising to me how different each one of my kids are. Because you think when you had, you know, you got one and we're getting another one. And you know, it's not going to be a carbon copy, but you think it's going to be somewhat similar. Right. And the only thing that's similar is they, they, you have to feed them and you have to change their diaper and then everything else. It is might different. look alike. Yeah. Mine did look alike. You could have, you could have interchanged them at babe, at birth and you wouldn't have known the difference between the three. Yeah. Um, I know my nephews like looking at their like really early pictures. It's like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mine are the same. They looked a lot more alike than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even sometimes when I'm looking at baby pictures, I have to stop and really try to figure out which one it is a lot of times. I can tell the difference, but it's not a split-second thing for sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I wanted to to ask uh, in, terms of, in terms of fish and stuff, um, what are – what are you looking forward to this year in terms of fishing? Hmm. I was looking forward to the first week of May. We always go to Moorhead and go offshore. And uh, I had to I had to cancel that because I'm switching positions at work. So I have training. We usually go on a Thursday, Friday, and then go Saturday. So we'll, I'll usually take Thursday, Friday off. But uh, not able to take off this time because of the uh, – a switch over at the job so can't i can't miss those two days so um i will say at, towards the end of may um there were some um guys on the facebook group that were talking about wanting to go to the coast and take the kayaks and go do some inshore trout and red fishing um so and uh, even somebody said something about going offshore in the kayaks to try to catch a few king mackerel. So I think we're going to line that up the last week in May. Uh, that may be Memorial Day weekend. I'm not sure. But I think it's like May 30th, 31st. And I think the weekend is June 1st, June 2nd, something like that. Yeah, I think that is uh, Labor uh, Day weekend. No, Memorial you know what? Day weekend. It's not it that that's the weekend before because we had it on that weekend. Oh yeah. And I was like, oh, let's change it. And so yeah. I changed the date to the next weekend. So I think the Memorial Day weekend is the weekend before that. Um Yeah. It, you're right, because uh this new baby's due date is Memorial Day. Yeah. So, so there's a I think maybe a group of four or five of us that are gonna go down and uh mess around. We're gonna I think I'm going to go Thursday night. I took, I did take that Friday off. Um, and then I think they're coming down. Some other guy, they're coming down Friday. We're going to fish maybe Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday, and then head back Sunday night. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I hope the water's calm and I can get out about a mile out and troll around and see if I can catch a pretty sizable, you know, I know I can get out there and catch some Spanish and stuff like that, but it'd be nice to get a King or a, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, that's the next thing I'm looking forward to. And then, you know, looking forward to just hitting whatever tournaments I can. Um, you know, it always starts out with these grand plans before I get ball schedules. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be able to fish this and this and this. And then the ball schedules come out and I'm like, yeah, well, I'd rather go watch ball than go to the fishing tournament. So I end up going to watch the kids play ball, which is I wouldn't trade it for the world, um, but it will be nice to when they get done with that a couple of years down the road to put a whole season together where I actually make enough of the tournaments to make a difference uh, and, right. you know, get a little bit of mojo maybe. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But um, that's really it as far as fishing. I hadn't even been hitting the work pond. You know, usually I can go over there at lunchtime and I've been working through lunch because I'm doing a couple of different jobs at the moment. So um, the, other, the other deal that I was doing, I had a quite a bit of downtime so I could kind of ease over there for an hour every day. But I hadn't even been over there, but I, I bet you there's some tanks laid up close to the bank. I mean, they have got to be 
on beds are already done. Um, I think Saturday at Jordan, the water temperature was 58. Most places I was at 58, 59. So I didn't see any on beds at Jordan, and I didn't, but I didn't ask anybody else, you know, if they did either. Some right. boaters, some boaters commented to me and asked me if I'd seen any, and I said no, and they they said they hadn't either. But uh, besides that. I don't know. What about you? What do you got coming up for fishing? Well, I, uh, I'm hoping to, in a couple of weeks, I'm hoping to get a, a, a trip in on the kayak to, you know, just kind of enjoy that. I, I think something that I'm really excited for, um, Henry has really taken to, uh, wanting to, to cast on his own. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, just kind of tying a weight on and letting him practice in the yard casting because he, he wants to cast on his own and he's been asking for, gosh, almost a year now, when is he going to catch a bass? So I'm, I'm really wanting to, to get that, uh, get that going, um, kind of get, get to the point where he can, he can do that. I, uh, uh, last time I took him, he was, he was casting on his own and ended up hooking himself in the back of the neck. It didn't end up going all the way to the bar, but it was, it was very, That's very terrible. nerve wracking. Um, yeah. but it's like this kid who like, who barely stubs his toe, toe and starts rolling around on the ground, wailing, just, just hooked himself in the back of the neck and goes, <laughs> just pulls it out like nonchalantly like and then cast, cast again. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm excited. I'm excited for that. Um, and then other than that, you know, just, uh, I would like to, I'd like to wait a Creek at least once. Um, and and add to my life list with some micro species this year. Um, it's been a while since I've since I've added more than one species per year. So when I want to do that, I just got a uh, an ultralight from Cash, and so uh, I want to put it to good use and go get a Tanago hook. Like, that's one of the like. It's I think it's it equals out to something like a number thirty two hook or something. It's the oh, smallest one they make. Crazy. Um, it's the smallest one they make. Like it comes pre-rigged because you like you can't get the the line through the the eye. Um, super super tiny. Um, but uh, I want to go after some like darters and shiners and stuff. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun for me. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I've never done any. I mean, I've got some small rigs and stuff for bluegill or panfish, or whatever, but never stuff under that but that sounds pretty interesting yeah it's it's not one that you want like if you're an adrenaline junkie this isn't for you um but if you are uh like if you're interested in uh like if if the number of species that you have on your on your list interests you then microfishing is the way to go that's how you add a lot of species hmm. um because I, like North Carolina, we have so many. Um, I think I met, uh, I think I met something like 49 species and only two of those species have come outside of North Carolina. Wow. That's crazy. And, and like, I haven't even scratched the surface of what, what there is in North Carolina to catch. So, hmm. um, yeah, um, I would love to, to do that and really add to, um, add to my life list there there you go yeah man well i know that you said uh you said that you had you had some stuff um but first let's uh let's let's thank get outdoors before we get too much farther in sounds get outdoors pedal and paddle is one of the largest canoe kayak and cycling retailers in the southeast with a huge selection of kayaks, canoes, bikes, and all the accessories needed to experience paddling and cycling comfortably and safely. 
Get Outdoors helps to expand and educate the paddling community through their free demos held on local lakes in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, and through in-store clinics and on the water courses and demos. And we'll even get your new boat rigged up for kayak fishing for you. Stop by the shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, or visit them online at shopgetoutdoors.com to be wowed by their selection. Sorry for cutting you off there. Um, but yeah, I wanted to uh, to do that before we before we ended up diving into what's your favorite. So um, now, now let's go ahead and uh, and do this for what's your favorite. It's time for what's your favorite, powered by Nakua Adventure Gear, power that fits in the palm of your hand. All right. So, Robert, you said you had one uh, that that right off the bat you were ready for. Oh, yeah. I got I got two questions now. But the first one I was thinking about, and I don't think I've asked this before, but I don't write down when it's just me or you. So it's a pretty good question. If I haven't asked it, you know, it will be even better. But um, I'm going to go with favorite cereal. Oh, man. Favorite cereal. Oh man, what is it called? Um, hang on a second, I'm gonna have to look it up. Um, what is your favorite cereal while you're waiting on me to answer? So, I'm gonna go Frosted Flakes. Um, it's a, solid, it's a solid cereal, I mean, and like, like my whole family eats it with sliced up bananas in it. So if there's ever, you know, we'll buy a bunch of bananas and then there's always one or two that are, you know, turning brown or whatever. But that's the brown green to uh, banana thing is a whole nother question. But, you know, once they start turning, they slice them up, put them in that Frosted Flakes with milk. And man, I, I just don't know that cereal will get any better than that. <laughs> I hear you. I, I do like Frosted Flakes. You just have to eat them fast because they do get soggy quick. Oh yeah, eating fast is not a problem for me. Though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, so for those of you who do not know, um, milk and I do not get along very well. Um, so I used to, I, my dad and I would, between the two of us, would go through a gallon of milk a week, um, and uh, never really bothered me. And then. Um, and it was right after I started getting back into fishing. Um, I had a, a Lyme's disease scare where I, I had a tick bite that just didn't look right. And um, the doctor was like, you know what, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put you on an antibiotic um, to make sure that um, that if there is any Lyme's disease, we're going to try to get it out. Um, and I don't know that I ended up having Lyme's disease. Um, but, uh, but they had me on this very aggressive antibiotic for a very long time and it ended up eating the bacteria in my gut that can digest lactose. Um, nobody, nobody warned me about a probiotic. So, um, so the doctor was like, yeah, it looks like that's what happened. You can get it back by drinking milk and stuff, but it's going to be a painful process. Um, gotcha. so cultured stuff like yogurt and cheese, I'm, I'm good. Um, that doesn't, I, I guess it's the probiotics in it help with that. And I will say I have gotten to the point now where I can, I can handle some ice creams and some milks and things like that, but having milk on my cereal and stuff like that is a, is not something I can do much anymore. Um, unless I'm willing to pay for it later. Um, so it has been a very long time since I have eaten cereal was what I was getting, getting at there. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, man, I am, there's a specific one. Um, what is it called? All right. So, um, great grains, blueberry nut crunch. <laughs> you got specific with that. 
great grains blueberry nut crunch so so there's a lot of the great grain cereal growing up like great grain cereal was one that my grandparents always had in the cupboard and i always loved it and whenever i found out that they had more than one kind i started trying other ones and i really really loved the blueberry one and the cranberry one um so in terms of like the kitty like sweet cereals and stuff it's, it's count chocula all day long but in terms of like if i'm just going to the store and i'm like i'm going to get myself some cereal because i want right. to enjoy a bowl of cereal this is going to be the one that i'm going for all right i like that i like that yeah sorry it took me a little bit to, to find it <laughs> i was like great greens blueberry <laughs> um all right so um I am uh I'm gonna go with what is your favorite book? Um favorite book. And you can do fiction, nonfiction, or um or both. You can do fiction, nonfiction, or both. <laughs> no, no, i I'm gonna go with uh Lonesome Dove and there's a whole three book trilogy to that, but I don't I'm not gonna remember the names of all three of those books off of the top of my head. But I, I enjoyed all those. And then also, um, what is the other series that I'm going to not be able to remember the name of? Um, let's just go with Lons the Lonesome Dove series, and then I'll think of the other one in a second. Okay. I can see that. I can see it because it was a movie series as well. Okay. I'll think of it in a second. Yeah, so for me um... – I, I, I am a big Michael Crichton fan. I'm a big nonfiction fan, but in terms of like my favorite book that I've read over and over and over again, I'm a big Michael Crichton fan. Um, the thing I love about Michael Crichton is he's a sci-fi author who he's so smart that you can't tell what's the science and what's the fiction. Mm -hmm. um, but he wrote a book called Prey, and that's P-R-E-Y. Um, and it was about um, nanotechnology and, and artificial intelligence and uh, like nano robots that become predatory towards people. And it is just a phenomenal, suspenseful, like gives you gives you chills a little bit while you're reading it. Um, I love all of his books. I, I haven't read one of his books that I was like, eh, but. Right. Um, I've read most of them multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other one that I was thinking about, because I am not a huge reader, but usually if I pick something up and it's, and it's a good book, I'll finish the book, but it's just a matter of, I'd rather fish, do something. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't sit a whole lot. Um, but the other ones that m my wife and daughter were reading, it may have been my wife just at the time. She was like, oh, you'd really like this book. And I'm like, ah, whatever. I, I picked it up and it was also a three book series at the time. There would be more than that out now, but it was the Hunger Games um, trilogy. I don't remember the name of the rest of them. Mockingjay was one and uh, I don't remember yeah. that. It yeah. followed along with the movies, but that book series, like I read the books before the movies came out. And that was one that she was reading that was, um, you know, uh, super good. I mean, suck you into, even though it's, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not really girly, but kind of is in a way, you know, love story kind of deal. Uh, and I'll tell you another one that just comes to the top of my head, too. And I will not be able to remember the name of the book but I can tell you who wrote it because this is a, <laughs> this is a girly one. It is, um, Nora Jones just writes a bunch of romance novels and stuff, but she wrote one that was about, um, this boyfriend, girlfriend that was, uh, they were treasure hunters, uh, in the Island somewhere. And that was one of the best books too. I don't even remember the title of it, but, I think I read that a, a couple of times. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. They did end up uh, recently uh, came out with a book um, that was a prequel to the hunger games. And then like the movie came out like, like less than a year after the book did. 
Um, but yeah, that, um, yeah. yeah, that whole storyline's good. I, I love, you know, like if it's, that's one of those, if I'm flipping through the channels and it's on, I'll stop and watch some of it just to see kind of where they're at in the story or whatever. I usually won't finish the whole movie again, but definitely I'll stop and watch it. And that would be one I would recommend to, to you know, young adults that are getting into reading. I feel like it sucks you in pretty good. It's a good series of books. The other what's favorite question that, I was going to ask, and the same thing as the first one. This is a good question, too, so I may have already asked it either. And, it, it, like, all mine rev revolve around food for some reason. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure why that is, but potato chip, favorite potato chip. Lay salt and vinegar all day, every day. Yeah, that's a good one. I like salt and vinegar. My wife hates them. I like them. That's not my favorite. If I, I had to go with favorite, I'd go sour cream cheddar. And we may have talked about that before. I feel like I feel like we probably now that I said yeah. sour cream cheddar. I'm like, because I think you kind of dissed on the sour cream and cheddar, if I remember right. No, I I I do think I think they're good. I, I do think they're good. I just think that that they have a lot of hype around them that that people like people love those things. Yeah, um, I'm not that in love with them, but like, yeah, I, salt vinegar is good. Um, I have. I want to go back and. Oh, I think I might have just said plain ruffles last time. I like those too. I want to go back and. Uh, I want to go back and and listen to see if I said the same thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you said salt and vinegar when okay. you said it. I was like, oh, I think I've asked that before. But you have another one. I have another one too. If you want, to, if you don't have one, I'll have one. But if you have one, I'll save that one. <laughs> All right. Um, well, since you've got one one ready, uh, go for it. I would be I'm interested to know. Money's not an object on this question, and this is not necessarily your favorite, but maybe your your indulge if you could favorite car, if you could buy whatever car. Um, so. I think we have talked about this one before because it was the, uh, the Ford F-150 King Ranch was. Oh, we did one. talk about the King Ranch. I remember talking about that. So we're going to have to start writing our questions down. We are. <laughs> we are already done. All right. Um, I'll have to, uh, let's see. Do you have a favorite song? Hmm. Should I narrow it down? Is that too broad? I mean, I've got a bunch of favorite songs. I mean, if I had to pick. How about how about we go your favorite you do, genre of music? Yeah, you could do artist, genre, song. And it really, it's changed a, quite a bit over time. As probably everybody listening, your song, your taste in music changed quite a bit over time. Um, but I would have to say, if I had to pick one, I would go with probably a Jimmy Buffett song, something like, uh, uh, not Margaritaville, but like, pirate look over 40 or something like that there you could pick from a whole like 10 of them but margaritaville's been a little bit overplayed and i still like that it's a great song but there's a ton of buffett songs that i like and i just that just kind of gets me where i need to be at a lot of times and laid back and i just like the whole vibe, his whole vibe and that was the first um the first real concert that i went to kind of like where we bought the tickets and stuff i did go to one beach boys concert a long time ago after a triple a baseball game they played after the baseball game super glad that i went because that was like my dad played the beach boys 
music all the time. So I grew up listening to them and then got to see them when I was a kid in concert. And then Buffett was the first concert I went to. Like, okay. Concert concerts. It's, it's funny you said that about the Beach Boys. So like in growing up, that was one that my dad played a lot. And my sister and I latched onto it and we loved the Beach Boys. Uh, whenever it was time to go on vacation, whenever we were going to the beach, that morning we would have to wake up really, really early, and Daddy would wake wake us up by by blasting Surfing USA. Um, yeah. And it was funny. So a couple months ago, um, I introduced Henry to the Beach Boys, and uh, last night I was putting him to bed, and I was I was rocking him back and forth, and I was I was singing uh, or I was humming. Um, the the tune of uh of hallelujah uh by leonard cohen and uh he goes what song are you singing like it's a song called hallelujah he said i want the beach boys there you go so i'm like oh man now i now i'm put on the spot i've got to think of a beach boys song that's not going to get him all riled up so I, I i couldn't remember the words of it so i just hummed uh hummed in my room um yeah that's a good one uh, there's a ton of them though i mean there you think about the beach boys and i mean we've even got man i mean it's they have a dang catalog but um you know i think me and my wife went to uh like a i think it may have been like tesla pat benatar somebody else and uh it's been a couple years ago but i tell you who's got some songs and who is a dang performer is pat benatar she i mean had like 15 in a row that the whole crowd was singing and when we went i was kind of like yeah you know i know heartbreaker and and this one and this one and and i was like i don't really probably only gonna know like three of her songs you know and then i was singing every one i was like oh i forgot about this one you know <laughs> so and the beach boys and buffett man you could play those you could play hours of music and not replay the same song and the same thing you can i mean i can sing to all of them my dad had these old it wasn't even an eight track tape he had something that he had recorded from somewhere that had like the two film canister crap on it and he i can't even i maybe call it i don't think it was called super eight super eight was the movies but whatever it was on two reels and you could put it down and he would play that thing and you could tell it had been recorded off of something, but he had all the songs on that thing. That is awesome. Yeah, we uh, we wore our Beach Boys tapes out. Mm -hmm. um, most definitely. All right. Um, for me, see, like right now, I'm I'm very much in a uh, like classic rock um you know i i love i love the 80s like hair metal power ballads um i absolutely love that pick uh, one favorite 80s metal power ballad pick your favorite oh gosh oh man that's that's hard All right, name two or three then, if you don't want to just pick one. I mean, it's got to be. Man, I'm blanking now that I've said it. Because uh, I'm like, I'm thinking, you know, it, it's one of those like, you asked me to name it. I can't, but any of them come on the radio. I'm, I'm belting it out yeah, with it. I'm with, you. I'm with you. I'll um, let you off the hook then. Um, but in terms of like all time favorite song, um, skillets whispers in the dark is, um, uh, has been my top for quite a while. Um, I, I love head banging and I love the, like, super drop tuned hard rock stuff um skillet is is one of the the top ones for me in that regard um but yeah in terms of a like 80s 
80s power ballad. Um, man, I, I'm I keep like I'm I keep like bouncing back and forth between like uh, like Bon Jovi and Aerosmith and and um, I'm like, man, which one is it gonna be? Um, I don't know that you could call uh, "Dead or Alive" a power ballad, but it's a good song, man. Um, oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I love I like every time. Like I, I'm always like, like I I start thinking about songs that I'm I love, and I'm like, man, I I forgot how good Bon Jovi is. <laughs> mm, yeah, they're good. I mean, I like. There's probably ten hair bands that are really. Uh, I think their the music was good too. People give them give them crap about it, but. Oh, I, absolutely! It, it they are lucky that they were as good as they were because they cared more about how they looked than how they sounded. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they 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 hit it at the right time, at least for me. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's a good uh, good ending point for us. Um, thank y'all for for listening and uh, for for keeping this podcast around. Um, let's uh, let's close it out in prayer, man. All right. God, thank you for uh, the opportunity to come on to this podcast and just just talk about the things that we enjoy and and talk about you and talk about uh, talk about fishing and all the all the great things that we have going on and all the uh, the frustrations that we deal with sometimes but uh, thank you for for all of all of the different things that that we get to experience and uh, thank you for uh, the listener and uh, wherever they are right now, wherever they are in their life and wherever they are uh, and whatever they're doing, pray that you meet them right where they are, give them just what they need right now. And uh, pray that you continue to help uh, Robert's uh, Robert's lungs feel better. And uh, pray that uh, you continue to put on a show in and through this podcast and in and through our lives. And we love you. And it is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, you have any any closing uh, closing things that you want to throw out there? No, man. Hey, everybody have a good week and uh, tune in next week. See what we come up with. All right. That'll do it. Take care. God bless. All right. Later. Thank you for listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Please consider supporting those that support us. Jade's Jigs Lead Free Finesse Tackle. Use promo code FNF10 at jadesjigs.com for 10% off. Save your outdoors. Stop losing your gear. Use promo code FNFP15. Saveyouroutdoors.com for 15% off. Omni Official. Check out Premium, Premium Pro, and their Ambassador Program. Use promo code FNF10 for 10% off at omniafishing.com. And if it's your first order, use promo code FNF15 for 15% instead. Mr. B. Lure Company. High quality handmade baits made right here in the U.S. MrBLureCompany.com. Use promo code FAITHANDFISHINGPOD for 15% off your first purchase. Get outdoors, pedal, and pet. Check them out at the shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, or at shopgetoutdoors.com for all your paddling and cycling needs. And Nakwa Adventure Gear, lighting, power, and all the connectors at Nakwa.com. Please rate, review, subscribe on whatever app you're listening on. That's going to do it for this episode. Y'all take care and God bless.